crescendo builds from this crowd here at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Steve, the gloves will be put on in the ring tonight. They've uh, changed the rule on that. They generally don't do that here in Las Vegas, but they're making an exception here. Which they is a come good in idea. first with the flag of the Republic of Nicaragua. Here he is, Alexis Arguello. Except for the visit from the Pope, there isn't a single event this year which will have as much impact on the people of Nicaragua as this fight. But there is no mention of it in Arguello's native country, in print or on the air, because of anti-government remarks Arguello made earlier this year. But by hook or by crook, the fans of Nicaragua will find out. And as you might expect, his fans here are just going uh, wild. He's very, very well liked. He's been very reclusive here, Steve. Uh, while we're here, he would not accept any interviews. He wouldn't be seen by anybody. I, uh, perhaps that's an indication that he just wants to be alone and put all his efforts and energies into this fight, this rematch. Strains have come to America by Neil Diamond playing in the background for the entrance of Arguello. And of course, the champion, Aaron Pryor, will make him wait. And here he comes now. Led by his entourage. And you'll hear and see the very animated pre fight ritual of Aaron the Hawk Friar and his group. It begins slowly and works its way up. Listen. Be getting into his shouting very soon. What time is it? Will be the catchphrase. So, this is what we're getting ready for the WBA Junior Welterweight Championship between the defending champion Aaron Pryor and Alexis Arguello. We are coming to you live from the Sports Pavilion at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now they are loving up. If I were a manager of a fighter, I would see, seat him, sit him down if I were Manuel Stewart and have him rest as much as possible because he's all ready and he's waiting for Aguayo. Aaron Pryor continues to penetrate with the eyes. He is a wild man in the ring as 
I'm sure you know if you've seen him in action, he swarms, he charges, he shuffles, he is relentless. Arguello, in contrast, the stylist, fights from long range behind a probing jab. What does Arguello have to do to avoid a repeat, particularly of that 14th round last November? Well, I just noticed something, Steve, here. Richard Steele, the referee for this fight, has himself very, very appropriately positioned. He's right in between the fighters. He has to be very, very careful that there's not a very, very quick attack. It could happen. Because here you take Aaron Pryor, he's become like he's mesmerized. You don't know what he's going to do. Well, one thing's for sure, Arguello cannot slug it up with Aaron Pryor. With that, let's go up to the ring announcer, Chuck Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, the officials assigned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the next bout of the evening, the judges are Chuck Minker of Nevada, James Rondeau of Washington, and Dr. James Jim Ken of California. The timekeeper is Charlie Roth, counting at the knockdowns, Jane Broadfoot. The attending physicians at ringside, Drs. Donald Romeo and Flip Bomansky, and the referee is Richard Steele. This is the main event of the evening, the rematch. 15 rounds of boxing for the WBA Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing, in the blue corner, the challenger, fighting out of Kings Bay, Florida. Weighing in at 139 pounds, his professional record 78 wins, 5 defeats with 63 KOs. He is seeking an unprecedented fourth championship in his boxing career. Introducing, ladies and gentlemen, Alexis Arguello. And in the red corner, Introducing the champion, fighting out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Weighing in at 140 pounds, he has a record of 33 wins, no defeats, with 31 KOs. Here is the WBA undefeated junior welterweight champion of the world, Aaron the Hawk Pryor. Okay, I have gave both fighters instructions in their dressing room. All I have to say to you, obey my commands at all times. Shake hands and good luck to both of you. Well, you can clearly tell where the crowd's affections lie. They cheered for Arguello and they booed Pryor and Pryor to the very last second with his clowning and his antics and his uh, psyching out. His uh, attempt to psych out Alexis Arguello. Aaron Pryor on the left, Alexis Arguello on the right. We've been waiting since November the 12th for the rematch, and here it is, round one, and Arguello. And Arguello came a hard one. Terrific right hand, and that's going to discourage Aaron Pryor. Aaron Pryor comes in like you would expect. Starting out fast, looking to score. Arguello coming back to the roar of the crowd. This will not go the distance if it keeps up this way, Steve. They're both going no. out with the knockout. The first one went 14 rounds. It's beginning just like that one. Back in the orange ball. It's almost like deja vu. Only about 3,000 miles to the west. Oh, a great round! A great round in the first round! Tremendous punch by Aaron Pryor. Right hand hit him right on the button. But Arguello got up quickly. Hey, you all right? Hold your hands up. Let me see. Richard Steele counted to seven. He separates the two. And Pryor wants more. He wants to finish Arguello in the first round. Well, the, re the referee gave Arguello enough opportunity and looked at him and asked him if he was all right. Pryor wants to finish it off now. They continue to exchange in the center of the ring. At the rate Pryor is going, he could tire, but his reputation was always go this way. Well, we had a knockdown in the earlier fight in the first round with Lockridge and Bose Edwards, but Lockridge, who was knocked down, came back for the win. Let's see what happens here. Now, Lockridge getting tremendous shots to the head, and he looks hurt. And another Hold him, Alexis! Hold him! Ready, redness forming around the left eye of Alexis Arguello. Aaron Pryor, posing with confidence. There's a right by 
Arguello, but a glancing blow to the head of Pryor. And it didn't face Pryor at all. There's a harder right by Arguello. Another right by Arguello. A left up cut by Arguello. And back comes Pryor with a combination. Oh, a right, a thumping right by Pryor. Arguello would be better off now, getting a little rest going off to the rear because Pryor is too dangerous on the inside. A blistering first round, about 40 seconds Let's remaining. Go, go back, go back. I have never seen the first go round go like this. Something's got to happen, whether it be this round or the next. A wild left by Aaron Pryor, hit nothing but air, but a right connected to the head of Aguayo. 30 seconds and counting in this first round, which seems like ages. I still say that Aguayo should recede to the back a little bit and take a little rest because he's taking some awful shots. Right there. There we go. Left uppercut by Arguello landed. And a right did not. Arguello wants to end this quickly also, you can tell. We're heading for the bell. Right, come back to The fans on their feet, many of the fans cry to applaud that first three minutes of action. And we'll take a look from another angle of that knockdown in round one. Well, this is a good sharp angle. You could see that right cross right on the button, right to the square in the face. It knocks Aguayo right down the seat of his pants. There's an awful lot of Vaseline in the face now. Round two. It's scheduled for 15. The WBA Junior Welterweight Championship. It will never, never go 15, Steve, at the rate that first round started. And they pick up where they left off in that first round. Constant movement on the part of both fighters. Both training extremely hard for the big rematch. Pryor's getting wild now, shooting those right, plans, those right hands across, but he knows they land. A right landed by Aaron Pryor. And he pulls Arguello away. I don't see how Aguayo can really withstand that head punishment because of tremendous punches. Aguayo's lost a little bit of force. That right hand stepped Arguello's head back. Now they're right up above us. And Arguello comes back. Well, Pryor is tiring. We know that he doesn't tire, but he could tire because he's shutting everything. There's a lunging right hand by Alexis Arguello that landed. Pryor was hurt with that right hand, but he's stepping back, he's slowing down. And a sweeping right by Pryor, but deflected by Alexis. Pryor will miss, and he'll come right back and score. Alexis Arguello looking to rebound from that opening second knockdown alexis is giving his all his very very best in this fight he wants this to be his last fight and he wants that title so badly yes indeed he said win lose or draw this is my last fight he said i'll put the last drop of my blood into this fight he said it'll be a better fight than the last one it'll be a fight to the finish those are the words of alexis arguello that was another tremendous right that Aguayo received. He didn't, he wasn't affected by it, but will take its toll. He seemed to shake it off, a vicious right by Pryor. Pryor looks almost desperate in his, his quest to knock him out. Right uppercut to the belly by Arguello. Oh, a hard right by Arguello to Pryor's head. And the crowd appreciates it. He's most effective now. He's pushing the fight. First time I've seen Pryor back up. And then he slithers right back in. Down the middle. It's difficult to realize how that goes. Oh, he stumbled. He stumbled. Pryor shakes his head. He says, I'm all right. Yeah, but that's a ploy. Lots of times guys are hurt, and they will do that. The bell will sound. Going to Arguello while round one went to Pryor. 
You see that? See that? Two great rounds. That would be my opinion also. Pryor went back to his corner, pretending that he was not hurt, but he was hurt. Aguayo does, however, look the more tired of the two. They're really desperately working over him. We'll take a look by a replay at some of the power exhibited by the champ, Aaron Pryor. Aaron Pryor's got a very, very sharp jab, and he keeps coming, he keeps punching. He, he's a little on the awkward side, but he's so determined to knock Aguayo out early, that could be possibly a mistake on his part. Then, Arguello coming back. Arguello is known to have a rapier right. He's got a sharp right hand. He was really a little off balance. He was hit, however, prior. Round three, it's scheduled for 15. It's even to this point, in our opinion. A lunging right, a reckless right by Aaron Pryor. He seemed to slip a little bit. Arguello now the confident one. Pryor is getting reckless at this point. He'd be better off settling down to gather up some strength. Arguello lands. Crisp combination. Richard Steele says get those punches up to Arguello. There's a thumping right by Pryor landed to the head of Alexis. Arguello counters with a left uppercut. Arguello has taken an awful lot. He is throwing a lot of power punches, but he's sacrificing an awful lot of punches he's receiving and right now just picking those punches off is Arguello and Pryor just walked into a shot well Arguello is also picking off Pryor's jab left jab by Aaron Pryor series of lefts followed by the right but going nowhere Arguello is the aggressor he's pushing the fight He's backing up Pryor. Pryor has backed up considerably since the first round. Pryor is so elusive, he bobs and weaves, ducks in, and then fires that right to the head of Arguello. All right, now Richard Steele won Arguello for throwing a low punch. A miss by Arguello with the right hand. Let him up, let him up. That Pryor is constant action. He never, never gives up. He's like a bee on him. Arguello's head and Arguello countered with a solid shot. Left jab by Pryor connecting. About a minute remaining. Great right up and cut by Arguello. Arguello is pushing the fight. I must repeat that. That means you're not the lot in the eyes of the judges. Arguello is back and Pryor into the ropes. Right uppercut, left. Left uppercut by Arguello. You can see the crowd is for Arguello. They're all rooting for him. As you said earlier, they don't like the antics of Pryor. And Arguello looks to air it out. Left uppercut, right uppercut from the overhand right. And the crowd urging Arguello on. A right crush by Arguello landed. Another right. He's got Pryor on the ropes. Oh, and Pryor tired, leans on him. Pryor is looking at his corner laughing, but he's hurt. He's being embarrassed by that attack. He's taking a lot of punishment here in the final seconds of round three. In my opinion, Aguayo is taking that second round. That third round, rather. Huh? He looks like he's getting ready for a shave. Something's happening in the corner. Richard Steele went over to Aaron Bryan's corner and cautioned him on something. Too much Vaseline, I think. Oh, no question about it. He was lathered up. And he came out quickly, getting ready for round four, scheduled for 15, and the that, championship. And that was discussed quite vehemently at the rules meeting, that Vaseline, there's no overuse of Vaseline, is not in the rules. It's been non-stop action from the opening bell. A left hook ah, uppercut that did that. Okay. He got Sorry. up on three. He's up to seven hey. now. You okay? Yeah. Here he is. A tech by Aaron Pryor raising okay? his hands. The referee. Arguello says he's all right. Yeah, the referee is giving him an opportunity and not an opportunity to rest. Now Arguello charging again, looking to finish. Pryor looking to finish Arguello off. Arguello looking to hang on. Arguello is holding on. That's a bad 
sign. It would it would be wise of him to hold at this point. Go for it, go for it. Hold him. I, I can't understand why Aguayo will not clinch at this time. Relentless pursuit by Aaron Pryor. Aaron Pryor is flying. right by Aguayo. He almost went down for the third time. Oh, he's catching. He's catching Aguayo badly now. It doesn't look good for Alexis. Not at all. As Pryor continues to pummel Aguayo. Where does he get that energy? I don't know how he stays up. Unbelievable here in round four. Oh, a right hand by Aguayo got it. Yeah, but he doesn't have that power anymore, Steve. It didn't stop Pryor at all. You're right. Alexis is taking an enormous amount of punishment at this point in time. Arguello is hanging by a thread. Watch your hand, watch your hand. We'll have to repeat. I don't know why he's not clinching. He should be clinching now and getting out of that corner. Punch it, get out. Punch it, get out. Punch it, get out. Watch your hand. He's lost his power, and he's having problems punching his way out. Go for it, go for it. What a tremendous fight, Steve. Power packed all the way. Less than 30 seconds remaining in the fourth round. Arguello just looking to hold on here to survive the round. Pryor will not step back. He's just on top of this man all the time. He's got that thirst for destruction. He just never stops. He is a living windmill. That's what he is. Round four is ending. Let's take a look at uh, just why he is in Never Neverland right now. Take a look at this by Aaron Pryor. He is relentless. Aaron Pryor is on that constant attack. He never, never lets up. He knows he has Aguayo hurt. He hurt him with a left hook then, another left hook and the right cross. They're all land. Tremendous left hook that knocked Aguayo down. Aguayo is glassy-eyed at this point. And here's another, another shot of that. He's constant action. As I said earlier, he's a living windmill. My God, has he got power and full of energy. Arguello trying to pump himself up. Round five scheduled for 15. Prior in the white, Arguello in the blue. And Aaron Pryor dictating the tempo. Timeout called by Richard Steele. Too much Vaseline on Pryor's face. Well, you called that one earlier. Let's see if Arguello has any power left in those punches now. It took a lot out of him the last couple of rounds. It certainly did. He came out very bouncy on his feet, like honestly, almost on his heels. He's taking a tremendous amount of punishment. It's tough to see a man like this come back to do this. Pryor stalking, overhand right, reaching the head of Arguello. Now, the series of left jab. I know, step back, great, step back. It's that constant motion of Pryor. He just won't let up. A left uppercut that swept in under the chin of Arguello. Pryor looks very calm now. He's back. He's back. He's, full, he's got his full senses back. He doesn't seem to be tired at all with all the energy he's expended. Right cross by Arguello, but didn't have that much impact. I still don't understand why Arguello will not back up or hold a little more. It'd be wise to do that. It's called to tell him to do that. In all the fights I've refereed with Aguayo, championship fights, he never does hold, really. He just fights all the way through, even if he has to be knocked out or knocked down. And don't be deceived by some of those Arguello punches because the crowd reacts heavily in his favor. But many of those punches are just being brushed aside by Pryor. Pryor seems to be a little more deliberate now. He's, he seems like he's... He's building up his power with his right hand. He's going to throw it any minute. 
Well, he realizes he's in the driver's seat now. You're right. Aguayo has lost his zip. He's on the defense now. He's just blocking, it seems. Although that was a tremendous left hook. Oh. Arguello looking to recycle himself here, get revived and charged up again. Very good words, that's right. It seems that way. It looked that way when he threw that great left hook and a right cross. Trainer Emmanuel Stewart. Kind of getting a second win. Yeah. Okay. Look. This one, break the left hook off before you throw the right hand. You know throw the left hook before you throw the right hand. <laughs> Got to get out and go to work now. You're lulling. You're letting the man take the play away from you. He's starting to take control of the fight. You're going to have to jump in his ass a little bit now, okay? And break the left hook off before you throw the right hand. But the man is taking control sure. now. You understand? Know you got his your championship. You got to get out and go to work now. You're letting him pull into the fight too much now. And let the hook in the right hand go. You start grinding. You're going to have to get yourself Watch together. Watch the Vaseline use. Put the water on me. Emmanuel Stewart, who has had a soothing effect of compelling influence on the past life of Aaron Pryor. And here's Alexis Arguello with Lupe Sanchez. Yeah, but I'll tell you, he's greatly concerned. Emmanuel Stewart's greatly concerned about him. He's telling him to calm down, and he's telling him uh, the fight's getting away from him. He thinks that Aguayo is coming back. All right, round six, scheduled for 15. Interestingly enough, before he started training him, Stewart picked Arguello. And then he started working with Pryor. He realized how strong Pryor is and how committed he is and how hungry he is. Emmanuel Stewart, of course, since he's taken over, is kind of embarrassed to see that Aaron Pryor is getting hit so much, and he shouldn't be, really. Because Aaron is doing very well. He has a very comfortable lead in this fight. He has to have with two knockdowns, my God. And you have to wonder how much endurance and stamina and power that first fight took from uh, Alexis Sarqueo. You have to wonder if he has flashbacks. Anybody who took the punishment that he sustained, particularly in that 14th round wow. last November, never forgets that feeling. Well, I'm glad you said the 14th round because he did a tremendous job in that fight. Uh, of course, a lot of a lot of people had him ahead in the 14th round. Don't hold Aaron Pryor, but the 14th round, you are so right. He did take a tremendous amount of head punishment, as he is right now. Arthur, the pace has slowed down a little bit here in round number six after a war over the first five rounds, and uh, it might be turning into a bit of a tactical battle right now. But you never know; it could open up at any second. Well, Emmanuel Stewart did say to him, now, you got your second win? He says, now go out and do it. And he does, he does seem to have a second win. He's calmed down considerably. There are no cuts. You would think that Arguello would have a cut with all that punishment around the head, but nothing. Earlier in Arguello's career, he was capable of slipping and countering. Now he hits. He, and he gets was, hit, and he counters. Yes, and he was, his reflexes, of course, were much faster. But well, what do you expect? You know, the age creeps up. I know he's 31 years old. He's been in there 15 years. It's bound to take its toll in slowing him down. Well, although his reflexes have slowed down by age, coming into the fight, he still possessed plenty of power. With his power being neutralized by Aaron Pryor by all the punishment. Go hold him. Right, now Aaron Pryor is getting dirty. He just gave him a little flick punch with that. There's another one, and he's holding around the head, and that's not right. It's not fair because Alexis is too clean of a fighter. I always refer to Alexis as a matador. He is an artist when he is at his best in that ring. Go hold him, work your way out, punch your way out. Arguello coming alive a little bit here. But alive. Pryor just turned him around. Alive, but it doesn't seem effective. That left hook uppercut that he normally has is very powerful, but it's just tapping now. See it? Just tapping. Round six concluded. Oh. 
haciéndolo fallar y contragolpeándolo, no tiene que hacer Arguello, looking uh, on the fatigue side. Yeah, the very, very compassionately and tenderly takes care of Aguayo. He's not cut around the eyes, but he's swollen, and he's taking an awful lot of head punishment. They're massaging the face, which is why he's stimulating the blood. He's going to have to fight his heart out and pull this fight up to where it should be because he's losing now with two knockdowns. All right, round seven scheduled for 15. The crowd rises as Arguello comes through. There's no doubt that the crowd is in favor of Arguello. Whenever he throws a punch, whether it's a slight tap, or a real hard punch, they're all cheering from because he is the he's the sentimental favorite here. They didn't like the way Aaron Pryor came into the ring with entourage and all the screaming and yelling and staring. He lost a lot of fans coming into the ring. There's a left by Arqueo. So things have uh, slowed down considerably since the first five rounds. Wouldn't you tire, Steve, at that pace? You got a good point. <laughs> Pryor now measuring Arguello out with that probing left jab. Then he comes in with a right, but it was deflected by Arguello. I think that the slowdown on the part of Arguello is because of all the punches he's been taking. It's taken its toll, but with Pryor, he's deliberately holding back and he's building up his power and throwing that right cross. He knows it's effective. Midway point, round number seven. The fight has really calmed down considerably. They're both tired. Those crisp punches are landing to the head of Arguello. Then Arguello comes back with a snappy right. But again, Pryor doesn't seem to be phased. And Pryor complaining to Richard Steele. Well, he's complaining to Richard Steele because he was hit below the belt by Arguello. But Richard Steele did warn Juan Arguello. I thought Pryor was going to hit the rest of the another, lovely, another low shot. And if you recall, he was guilty of the low blows Arguello was in the first fight. There's a right, a hard right by Pryor to the head of Arguello. Yeah, that's what he's doing, Steve. He's mustering up with that right hand, but while he's waiting to muster up, he's getting clocked with Arguello's right. Beautiful right hand by Arguello. The crowd comes alive as Arguello does. That backed him off a little bit, didn't it? That stunned Pryor. Now Pryor comes back, but Arguello able to pick him up. It doesn't seem to affect Pryor. He's got that granite chin. You wonder how he took all that punishment early on in the first fight. Round seven is in the book. No hay que buscar malos golpes por gusto. Sigue boceando a la distancia como lo está haciendo con Carmen. Ya va adelante. El ya va adelante y el resto de derecha atrás. Good exchange coming up right here. That was a great right cross in the part of Aguayo, but Agu you just don't stop prior. He just keeps coming in. And Aguayo did right by tying up prior. You ought to do more of that. There's Aguayo coming right back. It's a tremendous fight. What heart these boys have. I should say, gentlemen. So they rest between rounds seven and eight. Put him to sleep, bro. Put him to sleep. Put him to sleep. Put him to sleep. It is the kind of fight everybody expected and wanted. Round eight, scheduled for 15. Brian's corner just gave him an admonition. They said, put him to sleep. This looks like it's going to be the key round. Furious exchange as the round began. But nothing seems to affect Pryor. A low blow by Aguayo. But Steele didn't see it, apparently. 
crowd continues to exhort Alexis Arguello. Oh, great, great. Got my watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. I tell you, Pryor, Pryor really has a right to be a little annoyed because he has been hit several times low, and the referee has failed to admonish him on that. He always, he seems to be, but the referee seems to be perhaps at the wrong. We see it here, but at his angle, we couldn't see it. And there was some headbutting going on, too, in that last sequence. Punch away out, punch away out. Get that stuff out there. Right uppercut by Aguayo to the midsection of Pryor. Tremendous comeback in this round by Aguayo. He's got Pryor against the rope. And Pryor is laughing and holding. That's bad. Watch the low blows, says Richard Steele. It was Pryor who was holding behind the head. He's penalizing Aguayo. Penalizing for the foul, and the crowd booing. And actually, actually, it was Pryor was doing the holding around the head. Some debris thrown into the ring now by members of the crowd. This is one of Aguayo's so far best rounds. No question. It's difficult to keep up that pace, but if he could, he should keep it up. Pryor is slowed down. And he's being tagged with the left. He's being tagged with everything now. Those left jabs are penetrating by Arguello. Combination by Pryor, but slipping off Arguello's head. Don't push. No pushing, says Richard Steele. Pryor still looking very confident. Nothing seems to face him, Steve. He's taken some punishment in this round, and nothing happens to him. There was a heavy right by Pryor to the head of Arguello. It snapped his head. There's an awful lot of uh, dirt going on, but really, it's not intentional. It's the heat of the fight, and not the heat of the, the weather. I'm talking about the, the intensity of this fight. The heat of combined the with the lights makes it unbelievably hot. We'll take a look at action from the beginning of the round, the aggressiveness of the part of the span, Aaron Pryor. Oh, they really came out in this round. We thought it would never go the end of this round, really. It's really a relentless round on the part of Aaron Pryor. He keeps coming in, and Aguero is scoring beautifully, despite the fact that Pryor keeps coming in. Now watch in contrast as Arguello comes back. Arguello is very effective with the right cross, the left uppercut. Everything is working for him now. If he could keep up this pace, he has a chance. He has an awful lot to overcome with two knockdowns, however. Alexis Arguello airing it out. Arguello has a tremendous left hook and a left hook uppercut. When it lands, it really hurts. Mm -hmm. Round number nine scheduled for 15 as Arguello comes out to meet Pryor. What, in your opinion, does Arguello have to do to overpower Pryor and take this fight? Well, I tell you, the only way he can do it is by knocking him out because Pryor has the advantage of two knockdowns. And that's about the only way he can do it. We did say earlier on top of the show, we thought it would end in the middle rounds, or possibly could. And it could possibly go the distance. The continual cautioning of don't push to Aaron Pryor. Pryor is on the attack, but he's getting hit also while he's attacking. Don't push him, watch your ears. Step back to him, break. Aaron Pryor moving in on Alexis Arguello, but Arguello able to slip those punches. Now Pryor threw another illegal punch. It was a right flicking punch, but should have, he should have been admonished on that also. Right uppercut by Arguello, but Pryor has that hard belly. 
Arguello opening up, but Pryor is in too close, and Arguello can't get those punches off. So far, what we said, we said it was going to be a tremendous rematch. We compared it with the rematches of yesteryear, and it's holding true. It is living up to its billing, no question about it. Combination by Aaron Pryor and Arguello sustaining it. Toe to toe, I this would, war continues. I would really like to see Arguello back off just a little bit, do a little dancing on the outside, muster up some strength and come back in, really. He just keeps coming in, he's doing, he's very effective, but he's also getting hit. Well, before the fight, he said that lateral movement would be critical on his part, but he is staying right with Aaron Pryor. They said early in the day that Pryor was not in top shape, but he has to be in the best shape of his life to go at this pace. Aguayo hit him again below the belt. Well, we mentioned that uh, Aguayo has been knocked down two times. Pryor has registered 25 consecutive knockouts. Keep in mind, a knockout percentage of .939, highest in his weight division. That's highest in the history of the 140-pound division as round nine is closing down. Just look at Pryor, the way he just keeps coming in, just keeps throwing punches steadily. Never ties. Not, not too much finesse, however. Aaron Pryor, who possesses a seemingly inexhaustible supply of energy. You wonder where it comes from. Incredible. Straight left hand. Keep working. Put your left hand. Look short shot. Every time you shoot. Chocolate. Push it right back up inside with both hands. A sequence of punches by the brawling Aaron Pryor. That is really a sequence of punches. He went back to his corner wondering how uh, uh, Aguayo can take this kind of punishment and still stay in there. So we have reached round 10, scheduled for 15, the WBA Junior Welterweight Championship. It has been a dandy. Aguayo's right eye, the bottom of his right eye is swollen, and it looks like it's very, very irritated. His skin is very, very red. He's been vulnerable to that prior right cross all evening. There it is again. Combination by Pryor. Pryor hobbles Arguello. Arguello's eye is swollen now. He's taking a tremendous repeat head punishment. Another right cross dished out by Aaron Pryor. And these are taking their toll against Arguello. Pryor never seems to go to the body. He's always going to the head. He's a headhunter. You notice that, Steve? All to the head, nothing on the inside. And Arguello's eyes, the area around the eyes are beginning to swell and bruise, puff up. What tremendous heart Arguello has, really. Any other fighter would have been out of this by this time. He is living up to what he said, I'll tell you, putting the last drop of his blood into this fight. That prior is certainly a tremendous fighter, I'll tell you. He's got more stamina, and he keeps coming back. Where he gets it from, I don't know. Here goes Pryor again. Oh, what an uppercut to the chin of Arguello. Arguello's in trouble. He's down. He's down on his right knee, and he goes to the seat of his back. He's had it. Arguello, I'm sorry to say, doesn't look too good. His eye is hurting him. And he's, got, he's staying down. That's it. He it's all it over. It's all over. Aaron Pryor That's retains sad. his WBA Junior Welterweight Championship for the eighth time. We're getting the time, 148 of the 10th round. Aaron Pryor, the fighter of the year, has done it again. Aguayo Steve made no effort to get up. He knew he was a beaten fighter. He just kind of motioned up that that was it, he had enough. He looked at the referee counting him, and he acknowledged that that was enough. It is Bedlam in the ring right now. Aaron Pryor. 
Now 34 0 with 32 knockouts. We'll take a look at the replays of the finishing blows by Pryor. Pryor is on constant attack like he's been all night. He gave Aguero a tremendous lot of head punishment, but Aguero was valiant. He goes down, but he continues to take this unusual punishment. And that, that left uppercut really hurt Aguero. You could see that his mouthpiece was really displaced. You can see the way his face is grimacing. You can see he goes, he wasn't really, uh, we couldn't see, but it looked like a right uppercut did it. And Aguero was very, very sad. And this is the way his career probably will end. Yes, indeed. We may have seen the end of a brilliant 15 year career that began in 1968. Alexis Arguello going down for the third time. The third time he didn't get up. He just sat there, could not move. He was like just comatose, couldn't move. And there he goes. Off that blistering attack by Aaron Pryor. Let's go up to the ring announcer, Chuck Hull, for the official word. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, one minute, 48 seconds of the fifth round. The winner by a knockout and still the WBA world champion in the junior welterweight division, Aaron the Hawk. Prior. So the beat goes on for the.